using mutual information, super resolution methods, and imaging, including MRI. Ed. Thank you. Well, I changed the title a little bit just to make it a little bit more general uh, because uh, I wanted to also talk about some work of some other students. Uh, obviously, I don't know how to make slides, and I could have asked, I guess, my grad students, but uh, uh, I didn't want to bother them. They've got work to do, and I, it would ruin my reputation as uh, a Luddite. So, um, so I'm just going to show you these. These are like pseudo overhead uh, transparencies. So very quickly, uh, so, oh, by the way, the, uh, you might have seen that basically a lot of my work in the past has been looking at this, uh, the fractal model of imaging, and I'm not going to, I said I wasn't going to use the F word today um, because some of my colleagues in vision and image processing would have accused me of just uh, trying to sell my uh, snake oil, so I said I would avoid fractals in this talk. So some of the things that we're doing that uh, would be, are, are relevant to medical imaging are uh, um, work on localized image registration, so I'll talk about that a little bit later. And this was a project that was uh, suggested to us by Rob Barnett of the Grand River Cancer Care Center. And uh, the next thing I'll just briefly mention is super resolution methods, uh, work of two PhD students. Uh, I'll mention something called uh, computational anatomy and pattern theory. Uh, I won't talk about image fusion because that could, uh, that could be a whole hour's talk and uh, David and I have talked about this last time when he was here and uh, maybe we can talk a little bit in, uh, in the discussion on that. And finally, something that I'm not really doing, I'm theoretically supervising a student, but really Bernard Bodman of our department is doing this and this is a very hot topic, um, uh, dealing with the terabytes of data that come from a microscope slide and uh, I'm really impressed with this pathologist from the University Health Network, Doug Tachuk, who's uh, uh, working on this with Bernard. Okay, so very quickly, you all know uh, this, that um, different modalities show you different things. For example, CT will show you structural information and a PET scan will show you some physiological information. The idea is to put these two uh, images together. Um, and uh, because they come from different modalities, uh, you can't use sort of conventional mathematical methods like L2, all right? Uh, uh, so what uh, people have been using is this, this idea of what's called mutual information, where you compute the entropies of these images from their grayscale distributions as well as the joint probability distribution. And I won't get into details about that. Now, for a number of reasons, um, Diagnosticians are, now this is a little bit in contrast to what uh, David was saying, but uh, for the purposes of, say, radiation therapy, one is very much concerned about getting these images very accurately registered in the region of interest, for example, the cancerous region. The problem is that these are small areas, small pixel numbers, so it's very, the, the statistics is very limited, and you get very poor estimates of these, uh, of the mutual information, for example. So what uh, Kathleen Wilkie, when she was a master's student, uh, uh, with me and I were looking at was uh, ways of combining the information locally from these regions of interest as well as from the image uh, as a whole and we looked at these, uh, these so-called weighted distributions and, and that's all I really want to say there. Uh, the, the, this work is still preliminary, we're still waiting for data from Rob, <laughs> okay, the very difficult guy to get a hold of. Uh, super resolution, okay, basically the idea there is that I can take a several images of an object shifted and I use them to create uh, an image of higher resolution. Uh, one of my students, Mehran Ebrahimi, has been working mostly in the pixel domain using various mathematical uh, approaches, Fourier trickery, if you will, projections on the convex sets, fractals, wavelets, sample-based methods. Uh, this is relevant, of course, in many applications. Uh, um, we, we're, I, I'm involved with a, um, an interdisciplinary group, Porous Media Project, where we have access to a 3D micro-magnetic resonance Im imager. It takes pictures of porous media as well as um, uh, we have access to higher resolution um, data or higher resolution pictures of this porous media from scanning electron mic microscopy. I have another student that's working in the frequency domain. So this is magnetic resonance imaging taking the raw data. And again, as most of you probably know, the raw data that comes out of a, magne of, of, out of a magnetic resonance imager is the NMR signal, which is in frequency space. So he wants to take this raw data and then uh, perform super resolution. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can put a patient in, okay, take your picture, process the picture, and then you can move the patient slightly. 
And of course, the problem with that is that takes time. That doubles your acquisition time. And it's also uh, maybe not a good thing because your actual, the actual imaging operation is also introducing a lot of artifacts. So what Greg wants to do is to look at how we can do this in the frequency domain. And for those of you, the, uh, the engineers, that's basically, you want to look at, uh, uh, you either you ramp after processing, which is probably not a good thing to do, doesn't really give you any new information, or you ramp before, before the filtering. Okay, so I think I'm, I'm doing well with time. So finally, just want to mention this idea of computational anatomy. Um, computational anatomy is basically a mathematical way of looking, of characterizing shape and form. And the idea there is that you look at sort of populations, whether they be stem cells or brains, and you look at them as deformations of a kind of a template, a kind of an average. And so you let these, these, these uh, mathematical transformations carry the information. Now, that naturally, if you dig deeper, then you start to ask yourself, what kind of transformation, transformations will you allow yourself? I mean, you can just sort of put in a bunch of polynomials or whatever. But if you want to be a little bit more intelligent about this, the idea is that, and you can see that this would also be related to the problem of registration. When you put a patient in an MRI machine as opposed to a PET scan, the, the patient is not only, uh, uh, the patient is in different conformation, if you will. Not only are the arms in a different position, but the internal organs will be deformed. So naturally, one would, would be using continuum mechanics-based uh, uh, methods. These, these ideas go back to work on uh, pattern theory, which some of you may have uh, remembered. Um, Ulf Grenander was here as a keynote speaker in our grand mathematical challenges, and we're very happy that Ulf is actually co-supervising the work of one of my PhD students, Natalia Portman. So that gives you an idea of what we're doing. Thank you. So questions or comments? You want to add anything or? Go ahead. David. David, David, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I just yeah, David. wanted to add a, a little thing about MR is the motion tracking system. So I guess we must still do that with the motion artifacts used to be able to gauge your. Absolutely. We're not doing that. I think Jeff is uh, more involved with that, but absolutely. And again, a more intelligent way of doing it, in a sense, or clever would be to use continuum mechanics. In other words, the equations of motion for an elastic body, right? And that's a big question. I think I may have written it there that that's down theoretically, but actually in practical applications, it's, it's still in a very uh, elementary stage. Yeah. Right. So if I'm collecting images at the theoretical limit resolution, right, and can you actually get better than the visual allowed? Oh, no, that's, uh, <laughs> what do you mean by the theoretical limit? Oh, I'm afraid Stan Lipschitz is looking at me. He's a signal processing expert. No, I, uh, you'd have to be very careful. You actually, no, you need actually that there be more information in there than just the, yeah. Uh, did, I, did I get that trick question right? Yeah. That, that information really has to be there, right? There has, uh, there has to be the information that the machine has basically sort of uh, integrated over that's hidden inside. So if it's not there, of course you can't get it. Now the fractal method will do it, but it will give you phony information, Correct. which is what's good for video, cartoons, whatever. Yeah. Ed, thank you very much. Thank you.